This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. In this video, I want to talk about what a cat adjuster does. And no, it has nothing to do with pets. A catastrophe adjuster is on the property side, which again, different from auto. A, cat a catastrophe adjuster is someone who is on basically on standby as an independent contractor or freelancer, or even like a temporary worker. Uh, in case there is a major storm, more minor, I mean, it doesn't have to be major necessarily, a storm event, um, wildfire, hurricane, tornado, um, ice storm, winter storm, um, derecho, which is high winds, uh, straight line winds, um, heavy rains that cause water to back up into people's basements. Sometimes you can have, I mean, there's a, a a billion different, well not a billion, but there's a lot of different sort of catastrophes that an independent adjuster like myself gets called on as a catastrophe, <clears throat> as a catastrophe adjuster. So, you know, another, another uh, kind of a big one that we did a lot was, or that I did a lot was uh, you'd have heavy, heavy, heavy rains that would really saturate the ground. And then you'd get a windstorm that would follow along behind that. And then all these trees would get blown over onto property. So lots, lots and lots of things can happen. It's not just um, hurricanes and hailstorms. Although hail is probably the number one thing. If I, I think of all the, the kinds of storms that I ever worked, uh, hail was by far number one, and that's the one that I, I you're gonna get really good at it as, as a catastrophe adjuster because that's mostly what you do. Hurricane comes along kind of towards the end of the storm season, and that's something that is like, if you're a busy adjuster and you do catastrophe primarily, then a hurricane hits, then it's you kind of think of it as, you know, obviously, disclaimer here, any storm event, any kind of damage, any kind of catastrophe is something that's going to happen and we're here to respond to it, right? But from a purely financial point of view, if you're a working catastrophe adjuster, then a hurricane is kind of like uh, the cherry on top. It's kind of the gravy. I mean, you, you know, you're, the analogy I use, which I don't think is a very good analogy because I don't think we're the same as firefighters, but firefighters don't like pray for people's houses to catch on fire, right? Because it's terrible, it's absolutely horrifying. I've, I've worked fire claims and it is the worst possible thing. Um, but they train for it, right? And they're ready when the call comes, they go and they, they handle, they do what they gotta do, right? Um, in that way, Insur property insurance adjusters are the same, right? We train for it, we work, this is how we earn our living. Um, unlike firefighters though, they're, they could probably get, a, I don't know how firefighters are paid, but I'm assuming that they get a salary and maybe like some time and a half or hazard pay or something like that. Um, or they, they work, you know, several days on and then several days off, um, which I think a lot of first responders do. Um, by contrast, insurance adjusters, or at least catastrophe adjusters, we only get paid when there's some some claims to close, right? So we get clo paid by the closed claim. Um, but you know, hurricanes hit at the end of the storm season. Usually, it's between middle of August and uh, maybe the middle of October is kind of the peak, with September being the big spike and uh, landfalling, damaging hurricanes. And when that happens, that's you know that's towards the end of the summer, pushing into the fall. And uh, uh, somebody who's b a busy working catastrophe ad property adjuster probably got started in March or April um, with spring storm season, right? <clears throat> and again, if you look, you look at the, a map of the United States, and you probably are aware that Houston, Texas is a lot warmer in February, March, April than Minneapolis is, right? And so they're going to get spring-like conditions and spring storm stuff a lot earlier than Minneapolis will. Minneapolis is absolutely going to, to have that same kind of weather. It's just gonna be a little bit later in the spring. So really, if you think about it, the, the, a, a working a catastrophe property adjuster can think about their season between maybe March, April, and uh, maybe Halloween, right? So somewhere in that that kind of like that zone. If you get a if there is a hurricane and, and you get deployed to the hurricane, that could run you into the next year, right? Because you could be out for several months, you could spend the whole winter in South Florida running claims on hurricane whatever, right? 
Um, but the vast majority of the work that you're going to do is going to be hail, wind and hail with an emphasis on hail, right? So um, you start your season in March and then, you know, I think in 20 years for me, uh, I never went past the, the, the middle of May, like May 15th, uh, any year in 20 years with, with no exceptions, never went past the middle of May without getting deployed to a hailstorm. There's not one year that I could think of where that, that was different. Um, and there's probably a couple of years where that was the, the earliest I went out because nothing happened before that. There weren't any windstorms, there weren't any heavy rains, no ice storms, no nothing, but there was always, I always, probably not smart to do necessarily just because this because that happened for 20 years doesn't mean it would happen every single year for, you know, if I kept pushing my career forward um, or that it'll happen necessarily for you or this year or whatever, or past May, but next year. Um, but that's that, that's what I could kind of count on. I, st I, I sort of leaned on that. I was like, well, I'll be, you know, I'll be out by the middle of May because it, it always happened and it always did, right? But before that, you know, you would get, um, and this is where becoming a more advanced adjuster, more experienced adjuster, somebody that has um, really internalized the ideas of um, only closing what you can reasonably, uh, only, sorry, only scoping what you can reasonably close, realistically close that very same day, whether you do it on site or you do it that night, right? Which incentivizes you to be a better adjuster, a more efficient adjuster, because then you can get more work done and your cycle times are just like, you have the, the best possible type cycle times, right? And then you're gonna have a more accurate file and you're gonna have higher customer service, right? So that person, and who is easy to work with, who's friendly, uh, who says yes to everything. I know that that's, people disagree with that, but it served me very well to just say yes with a smile. Yep, I'll go take care of it for you, right? I'm serving the industry. Uh, that person, is going to be getting the little like 10 day, two week storms. And you know, the they had a, a thunderstorm that, that affected one neighborhood, right? That had, you know, or one side of town which had 250 houses in it. And you and two other people um, each got 40 to 50 claims. And there were sewer drain backup claims and you went and knocked those out in 10 days, right? A week, nine days, something like that. And then that's it, right? Those, there's no more claims because usually with, with water claims like that, they people go down the basement, they go, oh my gosh, I have water in the basement and they call a claim in, right? They're not gonna do that a month later or two months later or three months later or six months later like they do on hailstorms because people walk outside and they're like, house looks fine. Go back to what, doing what they're doing and until a couple of few weeks later, a couple of months later, roofers start rolling through the neighborhoods or the neighbors start getting a new roof. Hey, did you get your roof checked? All right, hail damage all over. What? That was like back in, that was back in March and it's now July. I guess we better file a claim, right? That's why the hailstorm has the longer tail on it, right? But as the experienced adjuster, the, the person who's, who's focused on being a better adjuster and developing those relationships, you're gonna, a lot more of those little small things are gonna pop up, which will contribute. Uh, and by little small things, I mean those little small storms where you can, Go for 10 days, one to two weeks, right? Usually for, for wind, pretty much, I think without exception, except for hurricanes, certainly, but wind storms, um, two weeks, uh, 10 days to two weeks, water uh, storms like uh, sewer drain backup, one to two weeks, um, ice storms and things like that, usually one to two weeks. Even back in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, when we were doing things on clay tablets and all that kind of stuff. Same deal, right? Because it, it doesn't matter what the technology is that you're using. It's just that those are obvious damage and people, they file the claims immediately all in one big chunk instead of spread out over the summer. So you start doing those things, you know, through the spring, maybe get something in February, right? Maybe a storm in February, two little ones in March, um, you know, maybe nothing in April. And then May 9th rolls around and Milwaukee gets two and three quarter inch hail you know, over half the city, right? Then you're spending maybe, you're spending more than two weeks on, that, you know, that storm in particular, and maybe you might be there for two months, you might be there for four months, right? You might be there until Halloween, and then that's the, that's the end of it, right? And while you're there, there may have been a hurricane, right? I'm up in Milwaukee working a hailstorm and August 19th, right? Which is making an example. And this has actually happened. Actually, actually happened on Hurricane Katrina for me. So it was August 
5th or something like that. I can't remember the exact date on Katrina, but I was already working. I was working on a hailstorm. And it wasn't until like two weeks in that things started to kind of dry up. And they're like, all right, well, you know, I guess if you want to go to that hurricane, that big hurricane down there, uh, we got claims for you. And so I went, right? But I didn't leave my hailstorm to go handle claims down on the hurricane. I think that's, this is a good point, uh, a good place to, to kind of make the point that, because I get this question a lot. Well, what happens if um, I'm doing this and this happens? You know, is it okay if I quit this to go do this? Well, it, the, the, this is predicated on the idea that this is better, right? It's a grass is greener. And the thought is, is okay, well, it's hurricane, which means that, you know, the fee schedules might be really high and they might be way more damage and the claims are gonna be really big, right? Which is probably true or, or po possibly true. Part, part of that is, go is gonna be a factual statement, but you might get sent down there and they send you a bunch of three shingles blown off the roof, tree on fence claims, right? And that's all, you get a hundred of those, right? Which is still not bad, but it's not, uh, for me, that's not a reason to leave steady, steady Eddie hail claims up here in Milwaukee or better yet, Minneapolis, right? Where it's matching and everything's three times more expensive and it's a known quantity. Nobody's injured or, or been killed, uh, hopefully on this Minneapolis storm that I've been working all summer long when this big hurricane blows up. The claims pay really well. A lot of the contractors that are here are gonna leave, right? So now I don't have to deal with as many contractors. I'm gonna stay here, right? Because I, I this is a bird in the hand, right? And these are claims. I'm not gonna leave claims to go get other, to go get claims, right? Because it's, it's probably gonna be a wash as to which ones are better, certainly with the exceptions, but I'm not gonna leave this, I'm not gonna leave, Minneapolis. I will, you know, let it be known, hey, maybe I do want to go down there, but I want to stick around here long enough to where I'm not going to leave my manager and my eye firm and my carrier partners in a lurch, right? Where they're like, well, now we don't have anybody to, to do these Minneapolis claims. They still got to do the Minneapolis claims along with the hurricane claims, right? Um, so I'm not going to leave this storm to go do this. And the same thing goes for, for daily adjusters. If you're a daily adjuster, or you want to be a daily adjuster, but you also want to do CAT, the question is, is why, right? You're leaving claims to go do claims. And the truth of the matter is, is that a claim is a claim is a claim is a claim, right? You're going to go take pictures of damage and you're going to write a scope and to make, take measurements, write an estimate and hand the homeowner a check, right? You're going to do that in both places. Arguably, daily claims, if you stay here, you're going to have bigger claims, but more water losses, right? Because that's what daily is. We talked about that already in previous video versus a bunch of wind claims where everybody's mad, it's all over the news, Taco Bells, you know, within a 200 mile radius of where you're working are all closed. You know, you got you're spending a gazillion dollars in gas and it's hot and there's love bugs and all of the, there's a, a million reasons why you're basically taking a bunch of miserable things and then throwing it onto just doing claims. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, and I, I Never really did. I, I mean, it, and probably the reason why I only worked six hurricanes in my career is because I was already working a hailstorm and I was like, no, I'm staying right here. You know, there's a part of you that's, you know, your friends start being like, dude, I made 90 grand this month. And you're like, oh, what have I done? But that was rare. That happened twice in 20 years. That that that, that scenario in particular happened, that the FOMO thing, right? This was always a better option because I was already locked into it. I guaranteed, I knew what was gonna happen, and a bunch of the other adjusters that were working with me left, always. And so I got their claims, they transferred back, um, built my name as an adjuster, as somebody's like, I'm taking one for the team, I wanna take all, give it all to me, right? I wanna take all the ones for the team. And then all, any new claims that came in. So I'm busy, these people start getting released from the hurricane after, you know, three to six to maybe 12 weeks. I'm still on this storm. I'm still up there in Minneapolis, knocking them out of the park. The only way I'm gonna stop up there is if it starts to snow and they have to shut everything down, right? Which can happen. Um, but this is where I'm gonna stay as a catastrophe adjuster. You know, the question I get sometimes is like, a, you know, just basically answer, what happens if this happens and that happens? Well, the, the, the true answer is, is that you have to think about the bird in, the bird in your hand, the one that you have caught, right? It's gonna go in your stew pot. It's worth the possibility that you might grab two, you know, by, by dropping this one, right? It's the dog with the bone looking at his reflection 
from the, from the bridge into the water and sees the, the other dog down there in his reflection with the bone too, and he drops his bone to get the other dog's bone. Don't don't do it because this is a risk. You're taking a chance that you're gonna you're gonna lose money here. You're gonna you're gonna give up uh, work right and and having claims in your pocket in hand to do something that may or may not be like a lottery ticket. And it's that's about you know. The, the odds may be better that you're gonna do better than a lottery ticket, but it's the same concept, it's gambling. So I don't like to gamble, so I'm gonna stay here, right? As a catastrophe adjuster, you know, you may not stay a catastrophe adjuster forever, you may wanna go over to daily. I think daily adjusters do pretty well, um, more consistently um, than you, you will if you're chasing hurricanes. Hurricanes don't happen very often, um, seems like they do, but you know, if you look at the stats, Not really, right? And, and as a catastrophe adjuster, you're not building your career around hurricanes. So you're gonna build it around hail. And, and, and truthfully, if you get to be really good at hail, then who cares if there's a hurricane or even a wildfire, right? You're still gonna go on those things because you'll be available when they happen sometimes, most, a lot of the time, right? But if you wanna be a catastrophe adjuster, you need to get as many licenses as you can, right? Especially anything between um, the Front Range and the, really the Atlantic Coast and the Gulf, right? Everything that's west of the Rockies, or sorry, east of the Rockies, I would get. And then I would still pick up California and some of those, those Western states because they do get hail and storms out there, right? But to start, if you can't afford every single possible license, you want to go after the Gulf and you want to you want to get um, the Upper Midwest as as well as New York, right? Um, and I'm going to tell you to go to HagueEducation.com and get um, take their little uh, composition um, assessment um, uh, trainings. They have a, a lot of, and they're, they're under $100 a piece. They have a lot of different things that will educate you on those materials and what, what those materials look like when they're weathered and what they look like when they have damage on them. And that is absolutely invaluable training and it will, it, it will help you to close more claims during the day because you're gonna spend less time going, I don't know if that's damaged or not. You'll, you'll stand up on, I've done it, stand up on a roof going, I don't know, should I pay for this or not? I don't know if it's damaged or not, right? And then you're up there for 15 minutes like staring at this spot, trying to decide if you're gonna, don't do that, right? Be edu Educate yourself on what that is so you can be like, that is blistering, that is a hail hit. Boom, 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 and you're off the roof, right? So. Get certifications that are gonna help you with construction, with damage ID, with material identifications, as well as getting a lot of licenses, and that will be great for you as a catastrophe property adjuster. Also, get level two certified in Xactimate. It's pretty important. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.